Namaste. Welcome everyone to Sri and Kira Live. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Master Lady Kira Ra coming to you from a very warm day yeah. here at Tosa Blue Mountain. So if Sri and I look like we're losing a little bit of sweat here, we are <laughs> and we're sharing this bounty and beauty with you. And for those of you that, that may not know, hey, that's our Temescal. Is that beautiful? And uh, during the March Equinox event, our beautiful artist, Freddie, uh, painted it and you can see it, how gorgeous it is. So we wanted to kind of bring that yeah. gift to you today as well on this incredible April day. So much to share. You know, Temescal is truly a community gathering place mm -hmm. that carries the vibration of divine connection and healing and cleansing. And it's a fabulous tradition that many indigenous people celebrate and honor uh, in every continent. And we're so delighted to have created one that has room for 22 people inside to sit comfortably and, of course, has this inspired art. We invite you to come check it out. Yeah, we really do. Make sure you check out <laughs> TosaBlueMountain.com and guys let's jump right in because last week we promised you there was a part two of the april revelations and part of that is i, I want to invite you for a second go ahead and just as you would sit in your chair i'm going to do the same or if you're standing or if you're walking or, or if you're listening to us on your phone really allow your spine to get straight right now and as you bring one hand to your heart bring the other hand to your third chakra and the reason I'm inviting you to do that, and the reason we're starting with that just the way it is, is because in this moment, the DNA that carries anxiety has been triggered through the planetary thought body of fear and the imbalance of the energies. Thereby, this configuration of the collapse of the fourth dimension, that is part of the experience of the tightening and the squeezing of the energy of density, thereby pushing everything to the surface, has brought to all of us in form, in this potentiality, and notice where Sri's hands are, the energy, the only way I can describe it is it's like this. It's an anxiety that constantly, constantly is there. And it sits here and it's tickling the heart here. And what it's doing is saying, can you trust me and can I trust you? Can you trust me and can I trust you? This has nothing to do about the outside world. This has nothing to do with anything other than your mastery presence, which is sitting there in the sea of density. And right now I'm gonna bring it back up. Remember, uh, I'll let my husband do that since I have no idea, there you go. That that beautiful density trifecta is doing its best right now to spin. That's that third chakra, fear, doubt, hesitancy. That's where the self-sabotage sits. And the reason that the self-sabotage has gotten richer and bigger inside this model of density, remember in this potentiality, we live in that victim triangle, victim, rescuer, abuser. Well, that self-sabotage model has brought us back to this third chakra moment that is inviting you to transcend. And in that transcendence, there is that moment, and I want you to relax as I share that, kind of building up to what we want to share here. And so to relax out of that constant anxiety, that constant 
you know, it's that constant motor, and that's why it sits in the third chakra, and it, it's constantly inviting you to be afraid. It's constantly inviting you to doubt. It's constantly causing you to hesitate, mm -hmm. to double doubt yourself more, even when you're in a good flow, or to stop a good flow. Why is that? Both hands to heart, because here it comes. Breathe in. Because we have been at this spot before, and we have blown ourselves up before. There's no other way to say it. We are at the same moment that we have been at many, many, many times before. And we have had infinite, you know, the way I describe it, Chief Phil, is that when I look at all the hoops of all the potentialities, most of them end right where we are right now with not enough of us remembering to be able to get out of our own way and come forward and actually come into that which we also know exists, which is the expansion of consciousness, the expansion of the upliftment of humanity. And the way that this particular experienced potentiality, which we have been in before, operates is through polarities. So this is one where we operate through polarities and where the energy of non-interference is sacrosanct, right? We, we Non-interference. So how do you affect through non-interference in a world that's imploding, right? We come forward in the truth of that which we are, in the energy of the sea of neutrality, thereby restoring balance and relieving the anxiety inside that is in every single being that is in this potentiality experience right now. You cannot escape it. It's there. So the key is to know why it's there and to be able to move through that right now. Now, so I want you to just breathe mm -hmm. that. I'm gonna let Shri share a little bit about the consciousness because remember, without rising our consciousness, without bringing the uh, collective consciousness into a that is what the new age is. It's not about the 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 literally the illusion of what people think this fantasy world is. It's the gift of the rise in consciousness that calls forward the highest co-creation through the law of instantaneous manifestation. And that's why the law of instantaneous manifestation is actually back on the planet right now as we have been demonstrating and modeling. You know, there's a couple of really important things to pay attention to. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is uh, the word discernment. There it is. Discernment is the capacity to be able to shift the context with which you look at something. Right. So if, if uh, when you sit with someone who has more experience than you in a particular area, they may offer you some discernments that you go, oh, I hadn't looked at it that way. Oh, that makes sense, etc. And that's where wisdom comes in. Yes. Discernment feeds wisdom, which is the way we apply it in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that everyone's doing the best they know how until their discernment awakens a little more. Now, one of the things I also want to say is that th we have the ability to lift. I'm sorry. What? This is not. This yeah, is it, it is. It is. It okay. Is. It is. It's you didn't need to say that. Oh, well, I, you could have kept I, going. I'm sorry, I, I got distracted. Honey. Um, one of the things that we have the ability to do is to recognize that everything, every time we have an emotion, there is a thought that goes with the emotion. So consider this for a moment. If, uh, as Kira was sharing, that, that conscious beings who have the spiritual DNA are carrying an anxiety because we've been at the precipice of annihilation or, or tragic events. No, we've annihilated ourselves, let's be clear. Not at the precipice, we've done it yes. <laughs> many, many, many times. So that anxiety, exactly. even though it's way in the collective unconscious, way buried deep, it, it resonates, it vibrates. Exactly. And what happens exactly. is the mind of density seeks to explain it or to a thought always appears. Yes. Another way of saying this, when you have an emotion, there's always a thought. Thoughts and emotions are tied together. And part of the difficulty here is 
understanding that that feeling, that anxiety, is stimulating a preoccupation with thinking in a certain way or an attraction to con yeah. thoughts that say, yeah, you're right to be afraid, you know, or whatever it is. And the so self-sabotage validation of the victim, rescuer, abuser that is supporting that third chakra in that cycle of self-sabotage, right? Yes. Density trifecta. So those points are the ones that I really wanted to share with you is that number one, there will always be a thought that is attracted to the emotion and will attract other thoughts that confirm that emotion rather than lift into a higher order of discernment. Yes. So that's one natural tendency. The other is the recognition that we are doing the best we know how and it's incumbent upon us to look deeper, to feel more profoundly, and to take action in our own experience in the world. After all, the world is yours. The world is ours. We are involved in this co-creation. We are the co-creation. And let me let me jump right through that because yeah. uh, I want to make sure we really stay focused on the reason we're sharing all of this with you right now is because April's energy is so powerful and so important. Shri, uh, April, the April event, please. No, sweetheart, that's where I wanted to go. Thanks. Um, this is really important. April 27, I want you to make a note right now now, April 27 is a very powerful date. I'm going to show you the April up-level calendar and the graphic Shri just sneak peeked you. I'm going to show you that one in a moment again. But this is what matters is that the law of instantaneous manifestation is happening. And the unification that started with the equinox is paramount to continue. We must continue unifying. We cannot even take a moment's, quote, rest from this. And through the blessing of the March event, my life was forever transformed through the reunification with my dearest brother, Chief Phil Lane Jr. Those of you that don't know Chief Phil Lane Jr., get ready to really know him. Um, he has been on the world stage his entire life. He is the hereditary lineage holder. He is the chief of the Lakota Sioux of the Native Americans. But he is more than that. This is a man that is holding the conscious ascension energy that is sustained through mastery presence and the law of instantaneous manifestation. And when he and I were on the phone together, all I can share with you is that when he sang to me and when he shared and prayed with me, the words he was sharing were the same words that have been walking through this body of form for the past two years. And then we talked about the mission we've both been on the past two years and realized that it was time for us to link arms. And so we are very honored and excited that as we are walking the law of instantaneous manifestation, we are now witnessing an entire community that is the first to come next to the Avesa International expansion and say, yes, we are one. And yes, we are carrying this message on behalf of the world. And in his prophecies, by coming together right now, it has to be 2022, by coming together, by unifying, by laying down all of our egos and saying yes to the expansion of consciousness. Yes. In his prophecies, we can attain this world experience by 2030. We can, we can absolutely come together and have the human experience raise consciousness to where war is no longer a necessary experience that we are having in this co-creation. And it brings us back to that fabulous graphic that Sri just previewed. There it is. is that, was that where you put it, honey? That That's it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So here we are. We have been looking at this graphic now since February, right? This has been coming forward. We've been looking at that Merc above self ascension since since this whole year. Remember, 2022 is the mastery presence of your divine self in its fullest expression 
And in order to do that, it's that trinity of the energy into our co-creative power with momentum. Energy, co-creative power, momentum, energy, co-creative power, momentum. You know, this, this tri-shul energy. And, and I really enjoy that this week that we're coming into right now, that we are in the energy of Navaratri. We are in the energy of the rising Durga. We are in the energy of Ramadan. We are in the energy of saying yes to the sacred within and to really focusing and calling forward the best we can be. Because as it is says in the top left here, in January, all of this exploded, right? Just that Merkaba was floating there because it, it opened that sea of neutrality, which is governed by the full moon energy this entire year and the rising lotus and that ascended being. And in January, it came forward and reminded us all that this year will be about the resolution of can humanity survive dogma and this is really playing out Sri. you know Absolutely. we're really seeing this on the world stage so yeah please so one of the, one of the things that happens is that dogma are the rules by which people find meaning and definition and stability. Mm -hmm. You know, dogma are rules that say it's this and not anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. then beliefs are, are, are also rules, meaning ways we organize our experience right. to have certain outcomes. And uh, we craft our beliefs in order not to be frightened by the infinite, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so one of the things that's acting out in the world stage to help our discernments is that the dogmatic traditions help enforce polarities, yes. right and wrong, me yes. versus thee, and all of those, and our way or the highway, you know, kind of thing. And these polarities are exaggerations of duality. Yes. Now consider yes, this yes, for yes. a moment. Yes, 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 Really consider that. <laughs> that we live in, a, in this free will zone, in this beautiful earth uh, uh, school, and duality is the nature of this experience. Now, while he's sharing this, I want you to be looking at the seven polarities. So keep talking about that, Shree. Okay. So duality creates uh, a friction, an energy that helps craft discernment. It creates experiences that e educate and illuminate yes. us. Yes, yes, yes. And that's a little different than the extreme positionalities that result in war. Because war or hatred happens when fear and anger get totally entrenched. Uh, so if you take a look at the seven polarities of free will, we were honored to be able to share this uh, back in 2015 as a way of, of uh, honing our discernments and paying attention to what's going on in our world so that we can, <laughs> we can respond with the greatest amount of love and, and wisdom as possible. And you take a peek there at the last couple of years on this uh, chart, the, that in 2020, uh, lots of uh, doomsday kind of stuff coming up because the energy of hopelessness, and certainly that was exacerbated by the pandemic. Exactly. You know, uh, versus trust. The ascended energy of trust. Yeah, and I think what's important, Shri, is you're talking about this as well. If you look at 2020, remember, we want to look at the two years leading up to this. Those were the last two years of the ascension escalator. So in 2020, it was all about the third eye. It was all about the energy of greed. Oh, excuse me, I'm back in 2019 for the greed, but what did that all, remember, this all built. So remember, by the time you got to 2020, you had hate, powerless, manipulation, control, and greed all built up to this hopelessness energy. Remember that in 2020, that trust, which is the force itself. That's why 2020 was such a huge year, because the trust is the force of creation itself. Fear is also the force of creation. It's a, it's a, it's a destructive creative force, but it's a force. And that's what those two columns are on the left and the right. But in the middle, when you look at the density and the ascended energy of hopelessness or trust, look what it took to get to that trust. It took first peace, which is stabilization of the root chakra in the trust of the divine. Then from peace, we became empowered. 
Then from that empowerment, we lifted up into our flow. 2017 was a huge year of initial flow for where we are right now. That brought in greater compassion. It ignited the energy of love. In 2019, we started seeing love again. We started hearing about love again. It was the end of 2019 when everything started shifting. And in 2020, it built to trust. And then building upon that trust, 2021 brought in great abundance so that when you arrive here in 2021 at the top of that escalator, you're stepping off in the abundant flow or you were stepping off in that hopelessness energy of lack. This is important to remember as we are here now. Absolutely. So let's go to that Mar uh, April calendar. I keep wanting to say March because boy is that energy strong. Well, and before we do, I, yeah, I just want to underscore one little thing. Uh -huh. And remember, send your questions to the chat. We're starting to get them, so send them in. Every quality of consciousness, whether it's uh, shame and fear or pride or love or joy or whatever, every quality of consciousness is always available to you. You know, Shri, let's, let's, let's really, let's talk about that because I think this is really important to talk about right now. Sure. Sure, because this is foundationalized on the work of David Hawkins, who uh, was really a seminal release in the 1990s of, of uh, uh, Power Versus Force. And uh, one of the things that uh, educated me as I studied with him back then was that the evolution of consciousness is natural. It's incumbent. It's, it's kind of like it's wired into your soul, so to speak. It is your divine quality. So that evolutionary process is natural as long as we surrender to that which is our nature, our authenticity, meaning surrender to love. When we instead govern our existence through uh, surrendering our identity or our power to the ego's position. Now I choose those words carefully. It's not about the ego, it's about the position that the ego takes. And that's really important. So when the ego is wrapped up in fear or grief or, uh, or any of these experiences that create polarization, and we say that's who I am, then we have limited our capacity to lift. Our self-ascension becomes uh, stalled as we exercise the experience of being at a level. Well, and what I like here is we were just talking about trust. Yes. Right? You know, so the gift is that density consciousness evolving is the energy of trust. You don't have to be, change anything about yourself. It's just about saying yes to the higher experience of, of, of the experience of this lifetime. And I think that often gets confused. But Absolutely. But what trust as a foundation does is it invites the optimism which thereby calls in the forgiveness and brings us to what's really important is that 400 level, the understanding. Yes. And, and the reason that's so important, and I, I wanna go to another graphic here because I think it's so important while this one's right up. So remember this guys, that 400 understanding, that's right here, that's spiritual activism. And the reason that's so important is we've, we've talked about this before, but especially as we get to April and as we're navigating this month and this vast month of like all hands on deck, all cards on the table, spiritual activism, Shri and I, back when we put out the long ago, when I put out our first book and we were out on what I called the carnival circuit, we were sharing with people that the world was moving into the level of spiritual activism because it was in and of itself ascending in consciousness. It is, we all ascend in consciousness, but until we can break free of a, my way is better than your way, even if it's an our way, until we can see and, and sustain the consciousness, and, I, and I, I really want you to feel this, bring your hands to your heart. So until humanity as a collective can have enough of us be really holding open the sea of neutrality to sustain the balance, because the level of consciousness to really affect the imploding moment before us, the level of consciousness necessary is to be able to honestly, honestly, through the integrity of your divine mastery presence, to honestly know that all have the right to be. 
You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to apply justice to them. You don't have to do anything other than know that as all have the right to be, that the universal all lifts. Mm -hmm. By holding the sea of neutrality for all to have the right to be, we each come to the same table. We all lay down our swords of whatever form they are because of the recognition that we all have the right to be. And in that moment, we break free of our judgment and are able to sustain ourselves in our seventh dimensional frequency. And I don't, you're, I don't think we have that graphic here, but that's, you've seen that one many times. So we, we then become, in the third dimension, I, I just want to go through this quickly, and then I want to put up that April calendar I've been threatening to show you. In the third dimension, the, the really highest aspect of the third dimension is to become the witness of the self. And for many, uh, this is a very popular work of, of many who have become very mainstream because a mainstream philosopher keeps you from ascending. A philosopher who is able to be, it's important to, to know that you have a greater capacity than density would like you to believe. You did not wind up at Sri and Kira Live for any other reason than you are already aware of this. You are looking to say, wait a minute, I want to do more than just sit back and kick back and talk about it. I actually get that my life here can be incredibly amazing and that my birth, the color of my skin and my, the thickness of my hair, None of that affects the capacity to be the master I am. And that in this moment, together we are better. Does that make sense? It certainly makes sense because no matter what word you place on it, spirit, God, creation, we are all of that. Everything are we not? is all of that. Yes. And all yes. beings are on their path of spiritual awakening. Right? Now, you may judge their path because you're looking through the lens of a dogmatic tradition <laughs> or a belief system that says that's all outside, true. you all know, true. that's outside the statistically significant part of my, my, my reality system. And have a smile at this because those yardsticks for navigating the world have a purpose. Yes. But they also have a limitation. And therein is the eternal dance of paradoxes in form. That what works at one level of being becomes, let's just say, completed or obsolete at another level of being. That's true. And so as you lift, as your vibration lifts, as your discernment expands. I'm looking as, for your messages. As your love expands, what seemed ordinary at one level. Uh, state of being actually becomes a kind of abrasive at another state of being. And this is natural. We do not all need to conform to experiences. We need to agree to allow everyone to grow through their experiences. There it is. There it is. And in order to really do that, it's about sustaining ourselves outside of these paradigms. The, the illusionary experience is phenomenal, isn't it? It's <laughs> fabulous. And the gift is that every limitation that we experience is self-imposed. And we've got some great questions coming in. And I want to show you the calendar before we go any further, though, because some of your questions um, actually tie to that. So here we are, April 2022, right now. The second harmonic expands all. As we effortlessly call forward the sacred union of the body with the conscious awareness of our divine mastery presence, the sustaining experience of energy, momentum, and co-creative power illuminates our lives continually. Continually. And remember those three, energy, momentum, co-creative power. That's that trinity. This year, so much about the trinity. That's that trinity that created that pyramid that is sustaining the entire experience of 2022 in the self-ascended state of awareness. And remember this month specifically in the ascended consciousness is all about the experience. Now, 
let's look at today and what's going on. First of all, if you can, just maybe bring your, bring your vision back from the screen a little bit and start with closing your eyes and, and really taking a breath. And then when you open your eyes, notice where you're called. Really notice where you're called and notice what you're noticing about that. The reason being is this month is about sustaining the Taurus field. If you look at the Wednesdays, you'll see that all the Wednesdays this month are very powerful, very, very powerful. And that's why it's the final Wednesday of the month, the 27th, which you see is the gateway. It's a beautiful gateway. It's literally the moment of walking on the water of the sea of neutrality in the moment of the new creation. And so on that evening, that is when Shri, myself, and uh, Chief Phil will make our first public appearance together as we come forward with the law of instantaneous manifestation two days into, is there a problem? No, I was gonna flash that up for him while you were talking. No, please let me finish. Go for it. I need a minute, I'm sorry. So on that 27th, we'll be coming forward how to, to help expand that sea of neutrality. And what's important to remember is that it's coming out of the Mercury retrograde pre-phase. Now, I want you to start going here. I want you to start dancing in this energy because this May retrograde, and we'll say a lot more about it in a moment, but this May retrograde is about the relaunch, the remembrance. It's the, re it's the yay. <laughs> it's what we've waited for. It's the uh, moment. So this is why two days in on the 27th, the culminating Wednesday of this month, this is why, now flash it, this <laughs> okay. is why we are, please be there and let everyone you know Get this out there. Help us spread the word. This is the first time we are all three of us appearing together, sharing and carrying the revelations that are coming forward from all of the tribes. And we are literally living the magic of the law of instantaneous manifestation through what is happening with the Avesa International Expansion, the foundation, the work that is helping so many through Chief Phil, yet another tribe here in Ecuador is going to be served through the Clinical Linda Foundation. There is a lot happening. Absolutely. Yeah. And you need to just head on over to shriandkira.com. And be there. And and you can register for free yep. and learn more about what is happening because this is a gift. It is a gift. And so I, I'm, I want you to take a moment here and I want you to look at this. So what you're staring at is the cosmic Isis. And, and Shri, you want to tell them a little bit about what this is and how this happened? So the cosmic Isis uh, was a revelation that came forward through Master Lady Kira Ra, actually at the throne of activation at Tosa Blue Mountain. You know, many of you may know that our uh, hillside here is actually the side of a very ancient pyramid. We're talking millions of years old, another cycle in, in the civilization on Gaia. And there is a throne, a, a stone throne up there that uh, carries a powerful alignment energy and activates uh, beings who are ready for that. And that this cosmic Isis ignition was actually a revelation that came forward uh, in early March this year. And one of the things that's so wonderful is that each being receives according to their capacity. And then we share with each other in order to further ignite the recognitions. And this cosmic Isis ignition, uh, if you gaze deeply into this, you're going to see a lot of symbology, a lot of information that Kira's gonna share with you. So as you're breathing in and as you're gazing here, you notice that this is coming to you from inside the eternal cycle of the sacred sequence of incarnation. This is the birth of Ascended Numerology. This is where Ascended Numerology, those of you that have ta I've taught it to, or those of you that are practitioners now, you know that the sacred sequence of incarnation and the way that we offer these soul charts is what calls forward these potentialities. And one of the questions that was in our chat right now was, how do you resolve that we've we've imploded before, but yet we're at the greatest point in consciousness that we've ever been in? Well, this is how you resolve that, is to remember it's all very much a kaleidoscope. And in this moment, we have come together 
to collectively remember through these specific bodies of form that we are able to remember and to have within us now every, I mean, everything that we have ever been, everything. And so the consciousness is expanding because in this moment we are remembering and through our remembering and remembering and remembering what's happening is we are expanding, expanding, expanding with every breath. We are expanding beyond that, which we have been before because the first major accomplishment is this year. You know, when we got off the Ascension Escalator, we weren't sure what we were going to find because in the vast potentialities of all the hoops, many of the times we got off that escalator, there was nothing there. We didn't even make it up the escalator. It's like a bomb dropped on the escalator. Making it through the escalator was the first step. Now it's can we come together outside of all ego, and I mean outside of all ego, can we come together and remember who we really are? Because to do that, this is, this is why I am here as the sea of neutrality, is the only way we can do this. It's the only way we can do this. Because without that, this imbalance has got support. And it will keep going until it reaches the point of no return. And at that point, there is a very, very interesting rebalance, right? And part of the reason I'm standing up right now, guys, is because that's what you were looking at on the cosmic ISIS, is that we are at a moment where we must pay attention to our bodies of form in all ways. You know, I really wish with all my heart that I had a, a photo of me standing up here right now from 2019. Because what started happening for Sri and I in 2019 and when Sri went through his revamping and reshaping and, and new bodying, right, was the remembrance that we were shifting into parallels. We were shifting into time experiences based upon our rising consciousness and that as you shift through the parallels you have got to pay attention to your body mm -hmm. it means that it, it doesn't mean about the way you look so i want you to hear that the reason we're sharing this is because what it does mean is about the vitality needed the strength needed to do what you're going to be asked to do and so part of saying yes to the mission is how that cosmic ISIS came in. That cosmic ISIS has been calling Sri and I two years. Yeah, it's been, two it years. keeps coming up. And I kept this, sketching this, it. This form is dynamic. And that came only after my body had reached an ability to be able to do certain postures while sitting in that throne at the top of the mountain here. And when you come, I'm happy to teach them to you. So what's important is that Regardless of your level of activity, regardless of what shape your body currently has, we have no idea what we'll look like tomorrow, right? Sincerely, because we are, if you're tracking this with us, then whether you're conscious of it or not, you are surfing dimensions right now. And we are once again, finding ourselves in this moment where stabilizing can only happen through the presence of you. It's about being who you are. It's about being in the center of that pillar of light without any doubt, fear, or hesitancy because those are what? Third chakra, self-sabotage. So I, I wanna invite you that you can sit in a chair and do this and, and Shri sitting in a chair, so he'll model in a chair. I invite, if you can, to stand up doing this. I'm barefoot right so you can be barefoot on the ground is always awesome to do this but i do want to teach you a couple of basic postures and assuming that you did get the videos for the equinox keep going back and watching donna that sacred yoga of you 
matters. You know, that started coming through me three and a half years ago as the expansion of the sacred yoga. And it's important to pay attention. There's going to be a lot more coming out about that. So bringing our hands right now, and let me just turn sideways because you see, you got to be, um, see like I'm perpendicular, right? Okay. So you want it, you really want to be there and I'm at my heart chakra, but I'm out front. So you want to be right there. Okay. Holding this energy. Relax. Start with one deep Abe Sa breath. I am here. And hold, I'm, I'm gonna go down like this. So you see how I'm holding it? You see how it's like, you know, it's like a circle, right? I am here as the sea of neutrality. And make it also, make it isometric if you can, right? Really hold it. And you see how my arms are, you know, like really the muscles holding there. So really hold this. I am here as the sea of neutrality. I am here as a free being. I am a free being. I am free being. Because that's what April's here to teach you. And that's why I had to do it standing up. Right? I am here as the sea of neutrality. I am here as a free being. I am free being. You know it's true. And it's not hard, <laughs> but it's April. Yeah. It's April, guys. And, and I really had to do that standing up, and I encourage you to do it often. Uh, I also want to share there was a question in the in the chat, Shree, that said they were having, you know, about the third chakra issues. And, um, you know, it was that about the anxiety. And I do want to share that. I want to put up, I think we have, because Shree, you really do such a good job explaining this one. There it is. So there it is. So this is any of you with third chakra issues. No matter what your mind's trying to tell you right now, it's your master higher consciousness talking to you. Absolutely. You know, one of the things to remember is just because you have a sensation doesn't mean it's what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we have sensations. You know, one of the classic ones that people are taught in empowerment seminars is that uh, when you have butterflies in your stomach, if you're about to make a little presentation or something and you have some butterflies, uh, is that fear or is that excitement? Because to the body, fear and excitement are the same thing. But to the mind, to say, oh, I'm excited gives you permission. Whereas to say, oh, I'm afraid, we collapse. So I'm inviting you to pay attention because the energy in your third chakra is, you know, regardless of what context you put on it, it's an expansion. It's an opportunity. Right? Exactly. And so this, It's your mastery talking to you. It, it very definitely can be that, exactly. And what happens is that when we start to empower, that is, give our attention to fear and doubt, when we start to empower the, uh, the victim th triangle by being hesitant to really trust our own uh, authenticity. So that hesitancy it stimulates a fear and doubt cycle, which then propels, energize, and justifies the victim energy. Victim energy is the prevalent standard in density consciousness at this time. The, we are either claimed to be a victim or we'll, we'll feel more powerful if we're a rescuer because we're trying to run from our own feeling of victimhood, uh, or we become the criti critical one, the abuser. Exactly. And exactly. so, you know, the one thing I want to mention is really important to take a breath and go, wow, yeah, I show up for those things from time to time, to just notice, right? not judge. Just notice how naturally easy it is to slip into a judgmental or a perspective that carries defeat or criticism or or feeling like you got to go save everybody. Mm. You know, those those kinds of things actually are a trap that keep you locked in at one level until you're done with them. When you say, I'm ready to grow through what this, you'll grow through it.
So this isn't about higher or lower, gooder or badder. This is about <laughs> consciousness. And, 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 and the one thing I want to say that delights me because I am so... He delights me. I am so blessed <laughs> yeah, that, that I'm finally hitting middle age. You know, that I finally he's say... He's just getting started. I, I finally have enough life experience to have seen... Right? Within my direct experience... All of the victim, all of the abuser, all of the rescuer, I have seen so but much. But to your, I got to say, if you guys don't know, you know, he's so freaking brilliant, right? What he has done with the levels of consciousness and the work that you're going to see come out of this man's, ne our next book is going to blow your freaking mind away when we finally finish it. But really, Shri, I bow. Thank you. You're welcome. So the, the message I wanted to uh, share is that I have actively been watching and looking for 25 years or so. Before then, it was yeah. part-time, but yeah. I mean actively, because I realized that my reason for being was to be a teacher, was to share, was to Wally. was to um, dissolve the veil. Mm. And so I want to say something to you. I think most everybody here has, it's sort of like uh, the Buddha is credited with having said, once you hear about nirvana, you're going to want it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're oh gonna, yeah, and you will, <laughs> and you will attain it because it's like oh, yeah. it's, it's like a recognition in <laughs> your so deep. True. You know, once you once you all of a sudden go, oh, there's nirvana, and you feel it, and you go, that's true, there is. Why would you, you do will lifetime else? after lifetime start walking in that direction? So I want to say the same thing about enlightenment. Enlightenment is ascension consciousness. There it is. Okay, so in the yoga of self ascension. This is a discipline yep. that is free from dogma. Exactly. There are practices and techniques that uh, make the pathway more easy. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I want to say is that it always comes back to the four steps of self-ascension, which are the very same steps, not fully articulated by David Hawkins, on how do you lift through the levels of consciousness. So I want to gift this to you right now. And well, we'll thank you, Shri. And then a couple questions we're going to talk about. All you right, know, so, wow. so it's important to recognize the ego is the personality identity that you started with. The soul or your authenticity or your divine mastery is the authentic energy that continues regardless of what the ego is doing, regardless of a lifetime or two, this is your truth. Exactly. You do not have to die to ascend. Proven that one. Okay. What is also really wonderful to take note of is enlightenment is 30,000 times easier to attain today than it was at the millennium. What he said. 30,000 times easier to attain. And when Kira Roth talks about we're at this time of awakening, we're at this time where we've gone further than before, well, that's the table. It, what kind you of... You want to join us? You know, the, the, the universe <laughs> has said, sweet. here's you know? the spread. And, you know, here's the gift. <laughs> Nobody, you have to know you're ready and walk in and take your seat because this buffet is already going. So this the, table is filling. The number one uh, quality to cultivate, uh -huh. and, and, and it really is hard to put a ranking on it, but I need to start somewhere. And he will. <laughs> is that we all have an ego. The ego is rooted in fear of death mm -hmm. and the need to be right. This is perhaps the biggest impediment in our quote. You know, can I share? <laughs> you know, I think all of you have read, hopefully you've read our book, Sacred Union, The Journey Home, and if not, why not? And please do. And one of the, the gifts with Sri was that I really, for the first time in my life, got... I really got what it meant to own I would rather be happy than right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and that was a really beautiful gift that Sri brought to me. So, yeah, there's a lot of power in what Well, and saying. there's a lot of people go, go to war and die out of the need to be right. Right. Versus an alternate choice. Can humanity survive dogma? Yes. We're, gonna, we're sure going to do our That's, best to assist. And so this... this uh, beautiful cosmic soup or yes. cosmic fabric yes. is supporting your enlightenment yes. in greater abundance than ever before. However, it's still up to you. It's still your choices and your actions uh, that are reflect those choices. Yes. And this is why surrender, 
unconditional love, releasing judgment, and being in union yes. with the divine, with your beloved partner, those are the the energizers that will keep the expansion happening. You know, the one thing I'll giggle with you about that, that Chief Phil and Sri and I all agreed upon was that loving your partner more every day Yes. and making sure that your body is happy and that your vitality is limitless and, and has no borders or, or, or means of limitation is a way that we sustain our freedom. I am free. I, I am, am free. free. I am free being. Always remember that. All right, I want to read some of our comments let's, first let's, because let's you guys are amazing. So I want to share with all of you. This These are like celebrations. I want to read these. These are fabulous. So here we go. All right. Sarah, uh, I am feeling the power of now and of this show. So powerful. Wow. Immediately I found myself feeling my heart and tears in the energy of not only my awakening, but also of the collective. Thank you, sweetheart, you because that's what this show is about, right? It's about remembering so that all week long, you know, no matter what's going on, we're here. We're right here every week. And this is why April 27, mark your calendar, be there. All right, I'm going to read more comments. And while I do, Sri, why don't they look at that April 27 and make sure they're getting into that event now? All right, here's some comments while you're all paying attention going, yep, I'm going to SriAndCara.com to register. Um, from A. McIntyre, hey, sweetheart, you are so on point. Mm. was what what was just described brought major tingles all over truth oh we love you too sweetheart from batia i feel the shift yes i agree and from amara 2022 feels to be the year of the high heart sacred lotus and may the escalation continue Woohoo! we affirm that and gary writes i've been with you for six years and i am amazed by your transformation both of you. Mm. I am very happy to be a witness to it all, all my love. And back to you, my friend. I exactly. You know, let's go back live. Exactly. I wanted to say, you know, sweetheart, thank you for being the mirror. Yes. Right? Because all of us, that's been the gift. You know, I remember years ago when when someone first talked to me about what they thought ascension was and about how they were, you know, like, we only believe in ascension. I'm like, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we believe that we will take our bodies with us, that we'll leave. And I... I remember really, really going deep with that because I, I really did study a lot of the world's religions. Many people don't know I actually went to Catholic University of America. And while I was there, had the blessing of studying world religions. I would never leave. I would take summer classes and learn them all and with these wonderful, fabulous people from all over the world. And the oneness model was so strong. Right, that, that it became so obvious. I remember the first time learning about Buddhism and it, like my whole world exploded. And I, I, I remember that as I look here and I, and I see uh, a, a couple of questions here, like does the recent solar activity have anything to do with the ascension energies? Well, the answer is yes, because as I was just illuminating, it's not about our body at all. This body, it's actually been the reverse, right? So when we talk about the solar energies and we talk about what is ascension, the yoga of self-ascension, is the living experience, and I want you to really take that in, the living experience of that ascended being that you're, you're hoping this body will go with somewhere magical. It's the living experience of the expansion of the, the capacity of your physical brain to be able to adapt your central nervous system into a state that sustains an open portal of consciousness, thereby through your electrical field alone, ignites those around you to do the same. You don't have to do it, just be near it. Well, this is a really important point. And I want you to just, as Sri's sharing, I'm just gonna sit here and hold it for you. You're here today because you know, feel, or recognize something here is important for you. When we hang out with people who are in that loving state, when we hang out with people who are holding ascended presence, it reminds us of the bliss of our own ascended presence. It's essential that we make choices that continue to clear the fog of density. Take the classes, hang out with people in events that are uplifting, that are not polarizing, and you will find you're gonna start creating more and more space for that 
divine master that is you. You know, you know I asked Archangel Zadkiel years ago, I said, well, tell me, uh, what is the difference between the self and the higher self? And how do we talk to each other? And this, this angelic presence just began laughing and saying, higher self, lower self, Sri Ramka, there is only self. Exactly. And it is the ego lens that creates the distortion that, of something other than. Right. That we then infuse our life force energy into that belief and that orientation, and we stay forever disconnected until we wake up to it. We stay disconnected from the everyday uh, exchange of consciousness of our right. divine mastery. Many times we glimpse it and we say, oh, I wish I could do that more, and then we go right back into our habits. Taking a breath on that, right? So I want to I want to share because we're getting close. I want to make sure we get these in. A few more things that have come in, really beautiful from Patricia. Hey, Patricia, whatever choice we make is not judged by the divine. Each day is a new journey to honor and know we can forgive ourselves if we cannot agree with other views. Beautiful sharing, and this is the blessing of that rise in consciousness yes. that moment that lifts that pops us that that steadfast commitment focused awareness complete trust that lifts us into that moment that transcends all judgment where we are holding as that sea of neutrality in the recognition that all have the right to be because when all have the right to be then i am free to be and i am free to be yes powerful moment thanks patricia all right barbara namaste beloveds thank you for your devotion and inspiration thank you we honor you sweetheart Sri cosmic mermaid cosmic mermaid hey cosmic mermaid <laughs> I'm swimming i, I with see you. a change in some people in the collective the veil is thinning yes. and the sleeping babies are beginning yes! to awake <laughs> I'm training and ready to help with my Reiki. I'm excited. Woohoo! And remember, you know, as everything we've been sharing, reread Lost Books of the Essene Lesson 5. The Lion Comes Out of the Woods. Hopefully, you were with us when we taught that again and you've got the up leveled version. Go back and read it because, guys, this is not a dress rehearsal. We're here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I. I can share with you, I went through my own two years of self, deep self inquiry and talking to my husband and, you know, really having to go deep in the acceptance of that unified spirit of the yoga of self ascension. And, and in that moment of realizing the selfishness within my own being, why would I not embody this? Because unless I embody it, unless Sri embodies it, how would we ever be able to demonstrate it? that the ascended presence is about sustaining the body of form as long as it serves the highest service, thereby continually receiving vitality, continually reverse aging, continually creative, continually abundant. Mm -hmm. That is the moment of the yoga of self-ascension mastery that is yours to claim right now. That's because consciousness has arisen to the moment where the sea of neutrality can exist. Because in order to be fully anchored in your yoga of self-ascended presence, you must be holding the sea of neutrality in the seventh dimensional field, where if you relax those judgments, thereby in the acceptance of the all. Absolutely. All right. Hey, Sarah. Uh Oh, Sarah signed up for the April 27th event and the whole three-part series Yay! of the up-leveling. I love that this is being offered. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Thank and you for seeing and, you know, that. I want you to remember that this is donations. We are we are in an active donation raising money fund right now. Remember, these are 501c3 bona fide donations. One of the projects Chief Phil brought to us is here in Ecuador. It is a tribe. We're going to get you the YouTube link right away. You can look at them. We are trying to raise the 9,000 immediately because they need it. And this is a profound, unified the, these, these, Amazonian presence. These indigenous in the Amazon yeah. are protecting the lungs of our planet. And they need our help and right now. <laughs> they have zero funding, yep. uh, not a whole lot of support because yep. people don't understand I mean, their passion. I mean, whatever we don't get, Shri and I are putting for in balancing, This has for, to happen. For balancing Gaia and, yep. and, and giving her help a chance. Us, help you know? them. Yeah, no. And so you'll be seeing a whole thing on this coming up in the next couple days. We're going to have Chief Phil on the shows. He'll be at Monday Magic. So you want to be at Monday Magic tomorrow? Oh, my God. I think Chief Phil will be there. Just a hint. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So, Ankil writes. Hi, Ankil. 
I've been recently working a lot with the Divine Galactic yes. Blueprint. I was called back to the Living in the Fifth Dimension series. Very powerful. Thank you, yes. sweetheart, for saying yes to you because you are a blessing on the planet and we are grateful. And we are grateful for all of you. And remember, tomorrow night, Monday Magic, and that is also a donation fundraiser for all the projects that are going on right now. And there's a lot. So help us help more. You know, one of the things to keep in mind is that each and every one of us is doing the best we know how yes. given the state of consciousness that we are anchored in yes. Yes. and that in every moment that can shift yeah. <laughs> and this is why as one of one of the uh, uh, people shared earlier forgiveness is a very useful tool to uh, uh, dissolve the addiction of the ego because it's only the ego that is judging criticizing or holding on to hurt mm -hmm. and the ascended master inside can take a breath and recognize we're all doing the best we know how, given our state of consciousness at this moment. And we applaud you, and we are grateful for you, and your willingness, willingness to expand, to lift, to serve. And this brings great joy to me as I feel the group that gathers here, and I know that we are co-creating beauty and expanding love and light with every breath. We love you. See you next week.